Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. Um, it's Kate Beaters, mindset, money, and marketing expert. Uh, speaking to you live from snowy Boston. We got some snow. I know it's bound to come. Um, and so we got a little bit this morning. Um, Callie is really happy about it. Me, not so much. But anyways, welcome everybody. Um, if you're new to joining me, uh, this is a live stream I do every Monday morning. I really figure it's a really great, great way to kick off the week. Um, and it's either a mindset strategy or a marketing strategy to help you make more money, grow your business. And so I do them every morning, uh, Monday mornings at 8.30, unless I am traveling, then, then I don't do them. So if you're here, good morning. Welcome, say hello. Please share the link. Um, I'm really super excited about today's topic. And so this is something that you definitely want to share with your community, your tribe, whatever, because we want to have everyone have a really amazing year, right? And so I'm here. You know me. I am a person who likes routine. I, I like I like the, certain things just make sense. You know, if there are keys to success, keep doing them. And so I'm here with my smoothie. Um, uh, kind of funny. My smoothie. I'll tell you a quick little story before I jump into the content. Um, uh, my smoothie has uh, spinach, apples, some blueberries, um, some banana, some protein powder, some water, and some Greek yogurt. So I was mentioning to my mom that I like having smoothies in the morning. Uh, I said that during when I was visiting over Thanksgiving. And she said, what's in it? And I told her, she goes, no, I want the type with the fruit in it. So it's like, gee, isn't this all fruit? But she, I guess she likes the, like the orange and, and all the pineapple and all that stuff. So good morning, everybody. If you're here, please say hello. I just want to put my glasses on, make sure um, that this is showing up correctly. And um, good morning, everybody. So today's topic is, is so perfect. I even have like a page of notes here because I want to make sure I don't leave out anything important. And um, I also, you know, um, I'm really excited because, you know, it's, it's December. What the heck day is it? December 5th. And, you know, we're, everybody's already thinking and planning as, as they should be for what they want 2017 to look like. And this is something I love teaching because it's been very helpful for me in my own business. It's been helpful for the clients I work with. And it's really just helping people really, um, the, the word I use is deliberately create. And that's actually one of the focuses for my coaching program members is really having people deliberately create because as we all know, time flies by really fast. Life flies by really fast. And if you're not really focused on what you want to create and what you want it to look like, before you know it, it'll be gone. And the easiest example is look at the summer, you know, especially those of us in the East Coast. I mean, the summer's here and it seems like you, you, you know, you, you blink your eyes and it's gone. And that's how our lives are. So, you know, today is going to happen whether you plan how you want it to be or don't plan. And 2017 is going to be, is going to happen whether you plan how, it want to, how you want it to look like or whether you don't. So let's plan, right? And, and especially if you're an entrepreneur following me, one of the reasons you became an entrepreneur, if you're like me, is to be able to build a business and life that you love, right? So if you're just like not watching and, and, and having things focused on what you want to have happen, you're not going to build that business and life you love. And it's just going to, all of a sudden, you, you know, you'll be doing stuff and you'll be wondering like, why am I doing this? Or this isn't what I want or whatever. So we really want to focus on it. And the way it really, really starts, I believe, is setting that intention. And so something I learned back when I was in um, corporate, a lot of you know I did business development. I did it for, I don't know, about 18 years or something in, in Boston. And what that really meant is being able to find clients. You know, what I wasn't given a list. I had to go, you know, just like us as an entrepreneur, I had to go out and find them and really take nothing and turn into something. And quite often that something was a multi-million dollar deal. And so the way it worked in corporate is, is that, we would right actually right around this time of year we would do these these planning this planning meeting and really focus on what is it we wanted to create for or have they didn't use in corporate they didn't use the word create you know but what what kind of goal do we want to hit you know don't forget corporate very masculine energy you know what do we want to hit what do we want to reach you know all that kind of stuff and um, the the way I learned to do it in corporate which is something I, I continue to do and something I've taught my clients and my community is is that you you decide where you want to go right. So what is it that you want to go, and then you work backwards, all right? Where do you want to go, and you work backwards? Now, the thing is, is that I have to tell you right now, is that most of you who watch this, and I'm guessing probably know about writing vision statements or goal statements or whatever you want to call them, but do you know that most people don't do them? You know about it, but you don't do it. 
So let's just kind of start right there before I dive into it. I've got, like I said, I've got a big, huge page of notes, but why, why don't you do it? You know, and, and I guess that most people don't do it. From, from my studies, my, my knowledge and, and all that is a couple reasons. Um, they, they, they don't believe it'll ha ever happen to them. Maybe they don't want to set themselves up for failure, right? Because if you say, I really want this to happen, and in the past it hasn't happened for you, you know, your, your, your subconscious mind, you know, which, which I teach a lot about your beliefs and all that, is going to stop you. So think about that. Like, you know, I'm guessing everybody here in the line, I don't know how many are here right now, I have my glasses on. Um, you know, you probably know what, what a vision statement is, but how many of you are actually like, writing it? So what you want to do is you always want to set the intention. So if we're looking at 2017, where do you want to be? So this was a year from now, and we're doing a live stream, and I'm saying, hey, everybody, share, you know, what happened to you at the end of this year? What do you want to be happening, right? And do you know the stats? And, and there are all different stats around this, but just to give you an example, I've heard even higher stats than this. Um, something on Forbes said that if you wrote your vision statement, you're 42% more likely to reach it. I've heard actually even higher stats, but... That was something I read recently. But the thing is, is that you always want to work backwards. But again, most of you listening to this, you know about writing a vision statement. But I'll guarantee you, most of you will get off this if you even listen to the whole thing and not even write it. So what you want to do, the, the key is, is to write it. And think about, again, why you haven't done it in the past. Because let's just kind of deal with it. Let's just call the elephant out right now, all right? You know, why haven't you done it before? And if you have done it, I mean, think about it. I know I've done stuff like this, like, here's, here's a card of mine. Um, like, here's, you know, a lot of times I'll write them on cards. I, I'll tell you, before I understood the power of this, I used to write them in these cards. I could just mind as well throw them in the trash, right? Because I, I never looked at them. And the thing is, is that, so why do people write them and not look at them? And what you want to understand is that there's two types of, of writing um vision statements or goals, you know, goal statements, whatever you want to call them, is that one type is based on um, what you think you can achieve. A very, like, realistic, like, well, you know, I, I made, uh, you know, whatever, I made six figures this past year, so my goal is, you know, I want to do 100 and, 110 or 115, right? And that's your goal, because it's realistic, it's safe, okay? And so you figure, well, I can just push myself a teeny bit, and that'll kind of, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll still kind of be there. So you can write, you can definitely write a vision statement like that. You know, um, this year I'm going to do 110, or or if you did 50,000, this year I'm going to do 60,000. You know, so it's a very safe thing, and and that way you can go at the end of the year, go, see, I did it, I reached my goal, you know, and um, and all that. But there's another way of doing it, and those of you who know me know um, I grew up on Bewitched, and and I love the show. My uncle created it, as many of you know, and I love vision statements that really all oh, just really let my imagination go because to me that's the whole beauty of this it's like that's where the excitement is otherwise if you're going with this well I did 50,000 this year and then I'm gonna do 60,000 next year I'll do 70 it's like back in corporate when they used to give you like whatever it is the 3% or 4% or 5% increase that's what you are kinda of doing to yourself and where's the excitement where is the excitement if you're just doing these boring little goals right I mean seriously you could just go get a job to me, being an entrepreneur gives ourselves this key, this permission to be able to have and do and be whatever we want. So I want to really encourage all of you to create goals that really involve your imagination. And so here's mine. I'm going to share it. Like, this is mine. It's, um, it's long, as you can see. And I even have a couple of handwritten things on because I, right, I was looking at it this morning going, I hope I have this on too. You know, but those are the big, exciting goals. Those are the really, really big, exciting goals. Okay, so <clears throat> what I want you to think about is, excuse me, I'm just going to take a sip of my smoothie here. When you have written your vision statement in the past, were you writing, you know, a very um, practical goal or were you writing something with lots of imagination? Okay, so just take a moment, just think about that for a sec. And good morning, everybody. See lots of you here, so, so welcome. And just, just think about that, you know, because if you're writing a goal that is just like, you know, and this year I'm going to, you know, do da-da-da-da-da, you know, this year I had 10 clients, this year I want to have 12 clients. Honest to goodness. I mean, I'm not saying it's a bad goal, but 
you know, when you do those kind of goals, it doesn't create the excitement. And when there's more excitement, there's more creativity, there's more fun, your life is more enjoyable, there's more passion. I mean, otherwise think about somebody who's been doing that same job, you, you know, in like the business world, the corporate world, day after day after day, becomes drudgery. You didn't become an entrepreneur for drudgery. So again, I really want to encourage you, think of a goal that just really lights you on fire, that is so excited that you just want to go like, guess what? You know, and you want to put that gold star like you got in kindergarten, you know, and, and your people like, guess what I'm doing? Guess where I'm going? So here's what happens. And you know, because I deal with mindset, I want to just tell you, so I'm, I'm giving you both action steps and mindset stuff, is that what'll happen with your mindset is that when you write a goal, revision statement like this, your mind at first is going to be like, whoa, this is awesome. Because understand in your conscious mind, that's where all the creativity comes from. So when you create a new program or product or service and you're like, wow, this is amazing and da 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 da, -da that's all in your conscious mind. All in your conscious mind. Your subconscious mind, which holds the limiting beliefs, and understand you're in your subconscious mind about 95% of the time. So let me repeat that. You're in your subconscious mind 95% of the time. Sorry, I'm losing my voice for some reason. Your, your fears and doubts and old stories are going to pop up. Your fears, your doubts, your old stories are going to pop up. And that's going to stop you. And that's why another reason why most people write these and they don't want to write them again because all of a sudden these fears and stuff pop up like, I've done it before, it never happened. Who am I to think I could do this? I'm not in this economy, not where I live, not in my industry. Um... You know, rich people are evil. Whatever stories you're telling yourself, that stuff pops up and it stops you. It stops you in your tracks, okay? And that's why people prefer to write a little goal like this, which is something like, yep, and this year I'm going to do, I'm going to get one more client than I got last year because it's safer. It's safer, okay? And remember, if, you know, if you studied Maslow's hierarchy of needs in high school, you know, the, 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 the pyramid kind of, one of your basic needs is to be safe. Your subconscious mind, when it has all these fears and doubts and things pop up, it's doing it to keep you safe, right? Because there's less risk with something like this. There's more risk with something like this. So let me see. I see a bunch of comments. So let me just see what I'm seeing come up. Okay. So, so think about this. And so when you think about it, you know, for those of you watching... And thank you, Francis. I saw you just shared my video. Thank you for that. When you, oops, get this thing off. Again. Oh, I love these little pop-ups. I'm never quite sure how to get them off. But anyways, well, there we go. Sorry, I just lost you guys. Sorry about that. These little pops up, pop-ups pop ups pop up sometimes, and I've yet to figure out how to do them. I probably could figure it out. I probably just don't think about doing it. But anyways, so I want to challenge you, first of all, what kind of vision statement are you going to write? One like this or one like this? I'd like to see some comments. What are you going to write? I'm just going to look at my notes for a moment. So the other piece I want to share with you, and this is really, really important, is that when you are, after you write your vision, so let's say you say, you know what? Kate inspired me. I'm going to write a vision statement like this, which is just pouring out my heart desire of what I want to have happen. Right? And you're all excited. Woohoo. Understand that when your fears and doubts pop up, this is what I call the freak out zone. It's part of my proprietary system. When all this stuff starts popping up, you start seeing it through your glasses. Do you like my glasses? So what that means is that you see all this stuff through your lenses. So you see, when fears and doubts pop up, you rationalize. You rationalize. And you say to yourself, it's not safe. It's not safe. Understand, this is being done in your subconscious mind so fast, nanosecond, that unless you totally understand mindset, it can be very difficult for you to stop yourself. Yourself, right? That's why we all work with mentors, because we don't see this stuff happening. We don't see how our mind just doing all this crazy, crappy stuff. We just accept it. But understand, you're viewing your world like this, with the glasses on. And that's why, just to give you an example, um, when I was visiting my parents, we went out to eat, and my parents decided to get a dessert for lunch, and they were going to split it. So they ordered a piece of pie, because it was right around Thanksgiving, they had a piece, a piece of apple pie heated up with some ice cream, right? Because it's got to have the ice cream on top of it. Well, 
the woman brought him out this serving and honest to goodness, it could have fed a family of five. It was this big, huge piece of pie. It's like three big, huge scoops of ice cream on it, right? Because that's how she wanted to serve the pie and ice cream. But how often have you gone to some place and you order a piece of pie and it's like really itty bitty skinny, right? So itty bitty skinny versus, versus big, it's still a piece of pie. It's perception. One woman's perception was, I'm going to give him a big piece. Someone else's perception is, I'm going to give him this size. There's no right or wrong. But understand, you just see things through your own filters, right? So when you create this vision and you're writing this, you're seeing everything through your lenses and you're going to see everything, all the reasons why you were going to fail, right? Because the fears and doubts you're going through freak out zone. But if you never start this, you're never, ever, ever going to reach your goals. You won't. It's impossible. It's impossible because you can't hit a moving target. So it all starts like that. So I'd love to have see some shares. Who's going to start with, with um, who's going to write their vision statement? Let's see. Because remember, the way it starts is you write your vision statement first. And then like I learned in corporate and like I teach everybody, you go backwards, right? How are you gonna make that happen? But you gotta start with your destination in mind. So anyone have any questions? Let me just see if anything's popping up. Oh, you're very welcome, Francis. Yep, yeah. you gotta, you know, you, you gotta have, you gotta have a mentor. You know, it's funny, I was working with my mentor, um, uh, Friday and we were talking about um, a, a new um, product I'm gonna be launching later this year and I told her because I you know being a mindset expert I said I can tell you I said I can just watch these little like things pop up in my head go well, what about this and what about that and because I was working with her I could make her aware of it and she she was able to just help me to squish it and I was like gosh I could have let something so itty bitty stop me and then when someone who's, who's wiser, I don't want to call her older because she's not, but someone who's wiser, you know, who's been there, they can sit there and say, you know what, that's not that big a deal. Or, you know, you don't need to do it. That's really what she said to me is, you don't even need to do that thing you're worrying about. I was like, oh, but otherwise I would have kept that in my head. So what I really want to suggest to all of you, and, and Francis, thank for bring, thanks for bringing this up, is that if you are looking for mentorship, if this is the year that you're like, damn, I'm going to reach my goals, Let's talk. If you're looking for a mentor, email my team, info at katebeaters.com. That's info at katebeaters.com. Let's have a conversation. Let's find out what you want to do, what your goal is, what you've been stuck in the past, and how to get you into your brilliance. So that's info at katebeaters.com. So who is willing? I see a lot of you here. Good morning. Um, yes, William. Actually, um, um, what I was saying, and you can actually watch this in a minute when I stop it, it'll be posted. What I was really talking about is setting vision statements and the importance of them. And what I mentioned is, is that most people know about them, but they won't write them. And yet if you don't write them, you're not, you're most likely are not going to have your success. And the other thing I shared is in corporate, we, um, always worked on we, the way we set goals and this is really important actually I didn't share this before and it's so super important the reason we set our goals and I apologize Monday morning I guess I just haven't had enough of my smoothie uh, but this is really critical is that we set our goals for, for a couple of reasons right one is is that um, let's see one is is that we wanted to make the money, right? Because we set a goal. It's like, so if I wanted to do 2 million or 3 million or 4 million, 5 million, whatever in sales, I want to make the money com compensatory to that. So that was one reason we did it. And, and, um, and the reason we had to reach our goals is because a, we, it, you know, we wanted to make that money. So whatever that money would be, you know, for me, it was, it was uh, multi, multi six figures of income. Well, you know, that's one reason I wanted to reach the goal. The other reason I wanted to reach the goal is um, they gave us these trophies that we reached our goals, right? And we this big award ceremony. So of course, you know, you come from a place of ego, right? We want to be, we want to be acknowledged. Like, look, look what I'm doing. You know, I, I hit my goals this year and that was a big deal. And the, you know, especially from a corporate mindset, that's a huge big deal. And the third reason is we wanted to keep our job, right? You don't hit your goals. At some point, you're not going to have a job anymore. So 
understand that I'm sharing this with you because I, I don't want you to not have your job. Even if you're your boss, if you're not making money, if you're not hitting your goals, if you're not making enough, you will basically be putting yourself out of a job, okay? So it's so super critical. Write your vision statement or your goal statement, whatever you want to call it, write it. Work backwards and get the mentorship, get the guidance to help you get there. None of us can do it alone. Okay, and if you're interested in talking to me, um, this is something I, it's one of my um, zones of brilliance, you know, email my team, info at katebeaters.com. So I want to wish everybody a wonderful day. I'm probably going to talk more about this um, next Monday. So share, please share this video or come back next Monday. And I just want to see if there are any other comments. Um, yep, uh, Francis, chasing the money. It shouldn't be, here's the thing, I just want to just address this comment. Um, Francis wrote about chasing the money. It shouldn't be all about the money. Now, when I was in corporate, it absolutely was about the money. I'm just going to be straight and open with you because that's how corporate mindset is. It's very much about the money. But understand, at least my personal shift, is that the money is just a resource. It just helps me do what I want to do, whether it's to give back to others, whether it's to travel, whether it's to do things for my family. That's all money is. It's just an outcome. It's just a form of energy. And for me, ultimately, bottom line is I want to live a life that I love and I want to have a business that I love. That's it. Bottom line. I want to be happy. And I want everybody in my community to have the same thing, whatever that looks like for you, right? So everybody, I want to wish you a wonderful uh, rest of the day. I'd love to see your comments. And again, you, you want to talk to me personally about mentorship, info at katebeaters.com. Bye, everybody. Be brilliant.